Five men, a pipeline, and a fate most can barely fathom. When the calm of routine maintenance at sea spiraled into a life or death vortex, only one emerged to recount the chilling depths of survival. On February 25th, 2022, at Pointe-à-Pierre, LMCS divers, Faisal Kurban, Kazim Ali Jr., Rishi Nagasar, Yusuf Henry, and Christopher Budram embarked on a routine maintenance mission for Paria Fuel Company. This team was not assembled by chance. Each member was selected for their unique skills and their proven track record in underwater maintenance. Their collective experience covered a broad spectrum of diving operations, with a particular focus on the maintenance of underwater pipelines, a task that requires not only technical know-how, but also a profound respect for the ocean's unpredictable nature. Together, they had successfully completed numerous missions, akin to the one on February 25th, 2022, which was supposed to be a routine operation. Their preparation for the task at hand was thorough, employing innovative solutions, such as a unique diving bell setup, to create a dry, pressurized work environment on the seabed. This level of preparation underscores the team's understanding of the risks involved and their commitment to mitigating those risks through careful planning and execution. Tasked with servicing a dormant U-shaped pipeline designed for oil transport, their preparation included a unique diving bell setup to create a dry pressurized work environment on the seabed. In the heart of Trinidad and Tobago lies Pointe à Pierre, not just any town, but a pivotal industrial zone. Here, the stage was set for an event that would ripple through the world. The operation employed an innovative diving bell setup, combined with what's described as a habitat cube. This cube was an eight-foot engineering marvel designed to create a dry, pressurized work environment on the seabed. The use of this technology is significant because it represents an advanced method of underwater work, allowing divers to perform maintenance tasks in conditions that mimic a surface environment to some extent. The cube essentially displaced water to forge an air-filled workspace, enabling divers to remove their gear and use their tools more effectively and safely. The divers were assigned to service a dormant, U-shaped pipeline, tasked with transporting oil from one berth to another. This task, while routine for the experienced team, involved intricate knowledge of the pipeline structure and the potential hazards it housed. Maintenance work on such pipelines is critical for preventing leaks or damages that could lead to environmental disasters or operational disruptions. Central to the day's operation was the handling of an inflatable plug, a device used to seal the pipeline and prevent the flow of oil or seawater during maintenance. The removal of this plug, a task that might seem straightforward, required careful coordination and precision. The plug served as a crucial barrier, holding back high-pressure air and maintaining a delicate balance within the pipeline's ecosystem. Its removal without the proper countermeasures led to the catastrophic pressure imbalance that triggered the accident. Understanding these technical details highlights the depth of planning and the level of expertise required for underwater maintenance operations. It also brings to light the critical nature of each task and the potential consequences of even a minor oversight. But let's not sugarcoat it. This isn't about pulling rabbits out of hats. It's about meticulous planning meeting the unpredictable nature of the sea. Underwater work is a gamble with high stakes. You've got pressure, both literal and metaphorical, looming over you. The risks? They're as palpable as the chill of the water. It's not just about what you know or how many dives you've clocked. It's about expecting the unexpected, preparing for it, and still knowing that might not be enough. This isn't about scaring off the faint-hearted. It's about respect for the power of nature and the unpredictable dance of underwater maintenance. So as these divers suited up, stepping into the abyss with nothing but their skills and a cube designed to keep the sea at bay, they weren't just going to work. They were entering a realm where every move counts where the line between success and disaster is as thin as the walls of that pipeline. On February 25th, 2022, what should have been another day at the office for a team of seasoned divers turned into a nightmare scenario. The task was routine, inspect and maintain a dormant pipeline, ensuring its integrity. However, hidden beneath this routine was a critical point of failure, an inflatable plug, a safeguard that turned into their doom. Its removal triggered a catastrophic pressure imbalance, 
transforming the pipeline into a merciless vortex that sucked in everything in its vicinity. The divers, caught completely off guard, were plunged into the pipeline with violent force. The interior, coated with oil, turned into a slick, dark tunnel where orientation and hope dissolved into chaos. Amidst this turmoil, a GoPro camera unwittingly documented the ordeal, capturing the raw struggle for survival against an unseen enemy. As the men were hurled through the pipeline, their battle transcended physical endurance. It was a fight for air, for sanity, in an environment that robbed them of all sense of direction. The darkness was not just physical, but a metaphor for the uncertainty and fear that gripped them. In those moments, the pipeline was not just a structure of metal and oil, but a realm where time and life hung by a thread. Christopher Budram, the sole survivor, would later recount the sheer terror of those moments. The initial fight for breath, the disorientation, and the desperate attempt to find a way out. His narrative provides a haunting glimpse into what it means to confront death in absolute darkness. Amidst the pitch black, the discovery of oxygen tanks offered a fleeting moment of hope. Yet this hope came with its own peril, the risk of delirium from oxygen deprivation. Christopher Budram faced a decision that would haunt him for the rest of his life. After a catastrophic event turned a routine maintenance task into a fight for survival, Budram and his colleagues were trapped within the dark confines of an underwater pipeline. As they struggled against the odds, fighting for every breath in a violent whirlpool of water and oil, a fleeting moment of hope emerged. They discovered two oxygen tanks, precious lifelines, in their desperate situation. However, with parts of the pipeline flooded and the air supply limited, Budrum realized the grim reality of their predicament. The decision to seek help was agonizing. Budrum had to weigh his loyalty and responsibility towards his colleagues against the slim chance of survival and securing rescue. The bond formed in the face of such adversity was profound, yet Bodrum knew that staying would likely mean a collective demise. With a heavy heart, he made the difficult choice to venture alone through the murky, oil-slicked pipeline, propelled by a sliver of hope and a resolve to bring aid back to his trapped colleagues. His path was not just through physical obstacles, but through the psychological barriers arising from the situation of being in such a horrific environment. Emerging alone, Budrim's survival was a testament to human resilience, but also a burden of survival guilt. The aftermath of the ordeal saw him grappling not just with physical recovery, but with the haunting memories of those who didn't make it. The bodies of his colleagues, retrieved from the depths, mark the tragic end of a routine mission turned disaster. The incident spurred a commission of inquiry, seeking accountability and measures to prevent such tragedies. Yet beyond the legalities and protocols, the story of the pariah diving incident is a grim reminder of the unpredictable dangers lurking in the deep. The Commission of Inquiry Co-E into the Perea diving tragedy was launched not just to get to the bottom of what happened on that disastrous day in February 2022, but to peel back the layers of accountability and oversight that failed. This wasn't was a deep dive into the operational safety and procedural elements that are supposed to protect workers in high-risk environments. The aim? To ensure that this kind of preventable tragedy never repeats itself. At the heart of this legal scrutiny was Christopher Budram's testimony. More than just a survivor's tale, his words were a critical piece of the puzzle. Expected to offer the coup raw, unfiltered insights into the sequence of events that led to the accident the real-time decisions made under duress, and the glaring gaps in safety that turned a routine job into a nightmare. Budram's recounting was anticipated to underscore not only the physical ordeal, but the psychological aftermath of such an event, highlighting the need for not just better safety protocols, but also support systems for those who survive such incidents. Through this lens, the inquiry sought to not just assign blame, but to catalyze systemic change within the industry, making safety not just a guideline, but a non-negotiable standard. If them didn't know where we had to go direction, we had to go be dead today too. Following the catastrophic event that turned a routine maintenance dive into a fight for survival, Christopher Boudram's recount offers a heart-wrenching glimpse into the emotional aftermath of the Perea diving tragedy. 
In a testimony that breaks through the surface of mere facts and events, Budram reveals the depth of guilt and torment that has anchored itself deep within him since that fateful day. As the narrative progresses from the initial shock and chaos of being sucked into the pipeline, we transition to Budram standing before an audience, reliving the nightmare, not through the detached lens of a GoPro camera, but through the raw, unfiltered lens of human vulnerability. The weight of his words pulls us into the darkness alongside him and his colleagues, not as observers, but as participants in the shared horror. Budram recounts with heart-rending clarity his desperate attempts to navigate through the pitch-black pipeline, his voice breaking as he confronts the guilt of surviving when his colleagues did not. I failed them, he confesses, tears punctuating each word. A stark reminder of the personal toll such tragedies exact on those left to carry their memory. His promise to return with help, a promise made in the face of overwhelming odds, becomes a haunting refrain, echoing the profound sense of responsibility he felt for his colleagues' lives. The gravity of Budram's emotional turmoil is palpable as he describes forming a human chain in a bid to find safety, only to be met with flooded passages that forced a heart-wrenching decision to continue alone in search of help. His recounting of this decision is not just a moment of narrative. It's a moment of profound human decision-making under the most harrowing of circumstances. Emerging alone from the pipeline, Budram's relief is short-lived overshadowed by the absence of a rescue for his colleagues. This moment, captured in his tearful testimony, underscores the isolation of his survival, the burden of being the bearer of their story, and the relentless pursuit of closure and accountability in the wake of loss. The Commission of Enquiry COE, into the pariah diving tragedy, led by Jerome Lynch, KC, emphasized that the tragic accident at Paraya Fuel Trading Company Lotidiri, Pointe Pierre operations, was not an act of God or a mere unlucky accident. The statement highlighted the need for accountability and preventive measures to ensure such an incident never happens again. Lynch pointed out the critical importance of learning from this tragedy to avoid future deaths and injuries. He urged all parties involved in similar enterprises to heed the lessons and recommendations from the COE's final report, stressing that the cost of the inquiry, approximately $15.5 million, pales in comparison to the value of human life and safety. The Commission's work over 16 months was aimed at thoroughly investigating the incident and providing recommendations for safer diving and maintenance operations in the future. Lynch also noted that despite the efforts to introduce voluntary diving standards in Trinidad and Tobago since 1997, these have often been ignored, and there was a clear lack of compulsory diving standards in the country at the time of the tragedy. The final report from the COE on the Perea diving tragedy has been submitted to the President, marking a significant step towards closure for the divers' families and the broader community. The relatives of the divers, including the LMCS managing director Kazim Ali Sienar, who lost his son in the incident, are among those eagerly awaiting the government's review and the subsequent actions to be taken based on the COE's recommendations. This ordeal has indelibly imprinted on the hearts of those touched by the tragedy, transforming sorrow into a force for change. Through the meticulous scrutiny of the commission and the courageous testimony of Christopher Budram, the industry is urged to heed the lessons learned, ensuring that the depths of such despair are never plumbed again. In the memory of Fizal Kurban Kazim Ali Jr., Rishi Nagasar Yusuf Henry,